The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. You don't have to wait. See, that woman grabbed hold to it. She found out something about faith. Faith tells time what to do. See, your time may not be now, but if you got faith, you can bring time from then to now. And this is going to be your time. I said today is your day. People have not been taught the kingdom. And they have not been taught the kingdom, so they don't have this kingdom principle by which they can evaluate their lives. And so what you're seeing here is you're seeing that people have taken poverty or, or sickness or premature death as their portion. And that's not your portion at all. Your portion is not poverty. Well, I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm poor for the Lord. No, you're not. You're poor for the devil. The devil's got your hoodwink. And sickness, indeed, you don't have to live with one sickness. You don't have, I just got one of our, one of our saints came up to me and said, hey, you know, it went and the doctor said, what's wrong with her eyes? Said, uh, the doctor said, well, you got glaucoma? She said, no, I don't. And so, so forth, she went and then he gave her some stuff. She said, you put that in the eyes and start singing, blah, blah, blah. And then she went back and they did some tests and so forth. And, and the doctor, uh, he did all these exams and couldn't find any yet. And then he said, well, go home, come back. Let's do some more exams. Couldn't even find it. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm just saying something. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor and so forth and so on. What I'm saying is I don't have to accept what the Bible didn't say. Let God be true and every man be a liar. So when anybody tells you you're not going to make it, say, my God. Are you following what I'm saying? If he be for me, then who going to be against me? So you've got to be dogmatic about it today because people are very adamant. I'm talking about church folk about what you're going to get. You better not say that about the devil. You know he might hear you. That's who I want to hear me. I told you about this man. He ran in church and out of breath and the deacon said, hey, what's wrong with you? He said, I got the devil on the run. They said, well, praise God. He's chasing me. Well, no, that you turn that around. So I'm saying to you that God has some plans for you, and these are big plans, but one of the keys is to understand the kingdom, that the kingdom hasn't been taught. What's been taught is denominationalism. And because of it, they put that before the kingdom, so they've ended up blind. And Jesus said, you're blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? Fall into the ditch. Another set of leaders are eating that Jezebel's table. Let me go to the other side. Another group of leaders eating that Jezebel's table. And I'm just saying here that you're supposed to be preaching the truth. You're supposed to be listening to the truth. Say amen to that. And you ought to have such a, a command on truth by the Holy Ghost until the Holy Ghost, he's a spirit of truth. And, and when something comes by that's not the truth, you ought to get a quickening on the inside. They don't, don't, don't receive that. that. That's not for you. That, are you following what I'm saying? Now you got to do that today because the enemy is trying to neutralize the church. Oh, you got what I'm saying? Also, uh, in this, um, we are now going to stop evil in its tracks because, because truth hasn't been preached, evil has gained ground. Now you got to watch what the kids get in school. Is this the right group? We're so evil has gained ground. You got to watch what they look at on TV. 
Am I right about that? You got to watch what they play with and in the, you know, whatever it is, you got to be, you got to watch it today. Because when I was young, they didn't have all that on television. Really, they didn't have all that. I mean, it was, you know, it, you, you couldn't do all of that. It was, it was a very much censored, you know, in terms of what you can show. But today, they're going all out, man. It's, it's crazy. All right, so what's happening is that we're going to stop evil in its tracks. So many times to do that, you've got to confront evil. And over in 1 Kings chapter 18, um, Elijah had to confront uh, those uh, leaders prophets of Baal and they had to have a face off. And if you remember when Moses went down to Egypt, God said, now when God, when Pharaoh asked you to show him a miracle, you do this. Why? Because you're getting to the place now that sorcery is so dark that you're going to have to confront it. But remember, you always win. Say no fear. fear. There'll be no fear in your life. I rebuke fear out of your life right now in the name of Jesus. And tell it, don't come back in Jesus' name. So now also, here is Paul. He's facing this, 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 this demonic um, uh, uh, stronghold. Over in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. I'm going to put that up there. I want you to read it. All right? Ready? Read. Many of them also, with Jews and furious hearts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found the 50,000 pieces of silver. Paul was demonstrating the power of the kingdom so, so powerfully until they threw their magic books in the fire. Put them in the fire. Now, my next section. The church is taking back rulership. The church is taking back rulership. All right. Now, let me show you how bad things can get. Let's go over here to 2 Kings chapter 6, all right? And let's just look here where there was a problem with famine. And watch this. Ready? Read. Wait a minute. They eating kids. They lost all hope and now they're going to boil and eat their children. Isn't the devil a liar? I mean, that's how bad it had gotten here. So the scriptures are showing you it can get bad. But we're going to stop evil. We're going to shut it all down. Now, the Bible says we have dominion over how much of the earth? All All the earth. All the earth. Say all the earth. earth. Now, I'm going to take you somewhere now. I want you to stay with me. All right. If you look at all the earth, what's left after all? No. No. All right. Now, this is the church. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let's go over to Psalm chapter 8 and verse 3 and look at verses 3 through verse 6. Ready? Read.
quiet. Here's your word dominion again. And he's put how many things on the man's feet? That means everything God made with his hands, he's put where? Under our feet, meaning we have authority over it. Say amen to that. <clears throat> now, let's go back and look how God dealt with the earth. Let's go back to Genesis chapter one and verses one through three. Now, you know this, but I'm going to put it in another, uh, um, put it, have you to think another way about it. Ready? Read. <laughs> that the earth was dark, but the spirit of God hovered over the earth <clears throat> and God said. Now, what happened before God said? Nothing. The spirit of God was there but God didn't say. So when God spoke, something happened. Got it? Now, all over the earth. So now here is spirit of God all over the earth and he now is going to manifest what God said. Come on. Now, let's see what happened here. Satan is a seducer. And look what he did, what he did to Eve. This is found in Genesis and chapter three and verse four. Let's start right there. Ready, read. And the Stop. Who said that? Satan. Satan is talking and he is whispering to Eve and seducing Eve to believe what he said. Now Eve then of course ate it and gave to Adam and he ate and the whole thing fell. Genesis Chapter six, verse five. And it says here that the thoughts and the imaginations of man was only evil continuously. Now this led to God having to flood the earth. Now these thoughts, how did they get these thoughts? How did Eve get it? All right, wait a minute. Uh, you, you, I, I'm not going to lose you. How did Eve get the thought to eat that fruit? Satan gave her the thought. Now, how do people get the thought to carjack a person's car? I'm, I'm only saying that now what has happened is that because of the church and its prayer life not being like it should, you've got demons in the cities telling them what to think. Why? They have now flooded the atmosphere. Now, when Eve sinned, the Holy Ghost had to get up out of here because God no longer had authority because the man that he gave his authority to that he could work through had now fallen and was now 
a, a, a child of the devil. Yes. Now God's got a plan, but I'm just letting you know that now God's got to get a Holy Ghost had to get up out of here. Yes. Jacob saw Jacob's ladder. Say Jacob's ladder. Yes. Because he saw angels going up and down because they could come on a specific purpose. But as far as God filling the earth like he did when it was in the beginning, he can do that because Eve and Adam lost it. Yes. But now on the day of Pentecost, when Jesus paid the price, then the Bible says that the Holy Ghost came in like a rushing, come on, mighty wind and filled all the house. So the Holy Ghost now is not somewhere, he's everywhere. So he's all over the earth again. That's why I can pray here and get a brother delivered in China. I can. Say amen. So we can get back to where Adam was before the fall. And I'm saying here was a lady and she came to Jesus. And this is in Mark and chapter 7 and verse 25 through verse 30. But here she was, a Syrophoenician, a Greek by nation. And she came to Jesus saying, my daughter is at home and she's sick and blah, blah, blah. And Jesus said, wait a minute, this is a children's bread. And he said, let the children first be filled. Now, what was he saying? He was saying, lady, you're a Greek and I came first for the Jew. So let the Jews have theirs first and then we'll get to the Greek. But she said, no, the Jews right now are wasting food and it's falling on the floor. And he called her a dog. And she said, even the dogs eat the scrum that fall from the children's table. So what he's saying is you came to the Jews, but they didn't receive you. At least give me some of the crumbs that they are wasting. And what did he say? Go thy way, thy daughter is healed. Where was her daughter? Was she a mile away? Was she 50 miles away? Was she in Atlanta? Was she in L.A.? Was she in Pittsburgh? Where was she? Makes no difference where she was. If you get down and you know you got dominion over all the earth. That's what that's all about. You can pray your cousin loose from them drugs from right here. It's according to your faith. There are people sitting in here right now and you feel that if the pastor can just lay hands on me, I can get my healing. That's what you feel. That's okay. But there are others sitting up in here saying, if I come in the auditorium, there is enough anointing in that place to heal me of anything I got. And you can get your healing right now. You don't need to wait on the sermon to be over. Say, I take it in Jesus' name. Yeah, right now. Hold 
to it. She found out something about faith. Faith tells time what to do. See, your time may not be now, but if you got faith, you can bring time from then to now. And this is going to be your time. I said today is your day. Glory to God, man. That's, that's a revelation. Today is your day. See, Jesus. See, some of y'all think when Ruth told her mother-in-law, she said, where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. See, when she went to her mother-in-law and her sister went on back to, to the Moabites, she, I know what her sister thought. Oh, Lord, she going to be picking pole beans the rest of her life, gleaning poor and so forth. No, no, Ruth saw something. And because she was in faith, she went down to them pole beans, and the first day she was down there picking them, here come Boaz. What brought Boaz by there? The faith that Ruth had. I'm saying, you reading the scripture, you think that's in time. You're looking at Boaz coming about three years later. No, Boaz showed up three hours after she got there, baby. You ain't got to wait that long for a man. Boy, I'm preaching now. I done got, I done got, am I going out too far now? Sit down. No, that's just what you think. It's according to your faith being unto you. Dominion over all the earth. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. You can shut Satan down. Watch this. In a neighborhood. You, 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 can, you, can, you can define the coordinates by which he's going to be shut down. Satan, I want you to be shut down from, let's see. Uh, give me some streets here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You can define where you want him to be shut down. You can have him be shut down. Come on. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on, think possibility. Say, if I got dominion over this, I tell him what to do. This man came over when we had Lake and Pulaski, and I, my wife did not talk about it. And he came over and he said, uh, I can't stay over here long. I said, why? He said, every time I come over here, I want to do some drugs. I said, where you stay? He said, I stay on the south side. Now, isn't that something? So there was, must be some drugs, demons over there on the west side. Watch that. That can't leave the west side. geographic area and say, Satan, I bind you from 22nd Street. Come on. Oh. Come on, we're going that way. This is where we're going, man. Right? Sit down. No, no, no. She said, you don't have to come to the house. Just speak. Believe me, the devil hates this message. You, you can't just hear this one time. You got to know that, that his ability is at your disposal. Blessed by today's message, order Possessing Your Mountain, Volume 3 in its entirety 
to receive the full three-part series. Available on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4. To order, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or online at BillWinston.org. In Possessing Your Mountain, Volume 3, you will discover that your destiny is planted in your heart by the deposits of the Word of God you sow into it. God gave us His Word to speak and to create and to rule and control circumstances and situations. Get your copy of this powerful teaching. Operation 10 City is a 10 city campaign empowering communities of people across challenged metropolitan cities throughout the U.S., restoring hope, providing resources, and imparting entrepreneurial education. Operation 10 City features a free two-day mega event, Greatness Unlocked with programming for youth and next generation leaders, business owners, and entrepreneurs centered on community outreach, business and entrepreneurship, and faith. Operation 10 City has impacted thousands to date in St. Louis, Detroit, Cleveland, and Los Angeles with a singular vision to inspire people and communities to access true economic prosperity and self-sufficiency through wealth building and ownership. It's a lot of single parents like myself that's doing everything by themselves, and this actually is a big help. It's in these days and times, the way it is in this world today, it is very hard. You know, and people are doing what they can to take what they have to make it. Some of us are like swamped in bills and in, in property taxes, and in, um, this is excellent. Um, we appreciate the blessing. Today I am here because I would love to expunge my record. I have made several mistakes at a young age. Me having my record expunged will be the most powerful impact in my life because I plan on getting my CDL so I can be a truck driver. I have a future. Hi, I'm Robert Alexander Cager, and I just won $10,000 here at Operation 10 City. I'm Rio Wilson for Cutting Edge Global, and the church just won $20,000 here at Operation <laughs> 10 City. Yes. You're going to be 10 times better than the best that the world can produce. This is your season. The vision is when you see on the inside versus what you see on the outside, and you chase it. That God is a part of every area of my life and things that I do. He wants to make sure you're always on the right track. You give God access to all your life, not just part of it. When I came here, I felt the presence of God. It was so powerful. When praise and worship started, I just felt the anointing. And if you're looking for change and you just want to change your life, this is the place to come when they come to your city. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.